Welcome, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. I'm Maggie Ostara, if you are new to me. And this is the second in a series of videos about conditioning, deconditioning, openness, and definition in the human design system. Today, we're going to explore what is definition? Where does it come from? How do you see it in the chart? Because I really want to help you feel empowered when you look at your chart to know what it is that you're dealing with. And then we're going to dive into a little bit about um, deconditioning and conditioning having to do with openness and definition. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. Deconditioning is a term that gets thrown around in the human design world a lot, and it means different things to different people. I'll just say that in the original human design uh, where Ra Huruhu was developing it, one of the things he talked about was that deconditioning is kind of automatically starts to happen when you start to live your human design, in particular, your type strategy and authority, because those are kind of the baseline for our human design. And so his proposition was, is that if you start to live your, your type strategy and authority, you will automatically begin to decondition, and that deconditioning takes about seven years. I think that that seven years probably came from this idea that we change every cell in our body over the course of seven years. I haven't seen anything that was definitive about that, but that's my guess about why he picked seven years. It's an interesting proposition because it's true that type strategy and authority are all quite countercultural and they do not go along with the way that mainstream culture has taught us to make decisions or how to engage with life or all of that. So in a way, as soon as we start to live our type strategy and authority, when we can really do that, yes, I understand how we decondition. But my experience, you know, having worked with a lot of people now is, is that a lot of times you have to decondition in order to be able to start to live your type strategy and authority. So it's a little bit of a chicken and an, an, of an egg um, issue there. So we want to unpack that a bit. I do get and I do agree with that if you are really living your type strategy and authority, it is going to help un decondition you because in order to be able to access those aspects of your design, you have to start think different. You have to think different. You have to act different. You have to move through the world in a different way. So that does make sense to me. But also as somebody who's been in the kind of personal growth, um, the human potential movement for a long time, I've just seen that we really need more support, generally speaking. And what human design can do is it can help us understand where we need to condition, but it doesn't really tell us how. But over the course of this series, we're going to dig into all that. All right, let's go ahead and look at some specifics. So this first slide is the human design mandala. I always like to show it because it's so beautiful, isn't it, right? And in a sense, it has the entire human design system all here in this one image. Let's go ahead and zoom in so that we can see the aspects of this mandala a little bit more. I'm gonna dig into each of these aspects a little bit more as we go through, but let me just name here that outside is the are the hexagram of the I Ching. Inside of the hexagrams, there's little hash marks that have to do with the lines of the gates. Inside of that are the number of the gates. Inside of that is the uh, astrological symbols. And inside of that, there are these little pie marks that are the gates themselves. If we go back and look at the original uh, image that I had here, you can see in that in this whole round mandala, right, is all the 64 gates. So there's the 64 hexagrams and then the 64 gates. Then inside of that are the planetary alignments. And that's what we're going to look at a little bit more uh, today so that you can understand how this all comes together. Now in this particular uh, image, and this comes from uh, a book that I have, an ebook called Getting Started with Human Design. And if you haven't gotten it from me already, it is an, a gift for you. And it comes with uh, full illustrations to help you understand what you're looking at in the chart. It also has illustrations about your type and your authority. If you want even more in-depth understanding, you can go and get my Transform Your Life with Human Design. Um, ebook series that has more and more of the aspects of the human design system and it. it's only $27. I'll put all that in the description in case you want to go and check it out. 
So this image zooms out again, and it is pointing to the parts on the mandala. This is a different representation of the mandalas, but it's all the same information. So you can see that the, um, the little blue arrows are pointing to um, the gates, and then the red arrows are pointing to the hexagrams of the I Ching in this particular representation. Then this uh, Im image, the blue arrows are pointing to where the planetary alignments are inside of the different gates. And this is what creates definition because it's where the planets are when you were born, which is the, the black representation, and then uh, where they were 88 days prior, um, which are the red uh, representation. And when you put those two together, that's how you get your body graph. So in this image, yes, the defined parts are colored in, and that's what makes your chart different from everybody else's is what's colored in on your chart. And the white parts are what's open on you. So we all have the whole human design uh, system inside of our own energy field. You have access to all of the energies, all 64 gates, all 60, uh, 36 channels, and all nine centers, okay? And you've experienced all of these energies many, many times during the course of your life. What differs is how you experience those energies. So the parts that are colored in are parts that you are going to have ongoing, ready, reliable access to those energies and a consistent way of experiencing them. Whereas the parts that are open, you're going to have a variable relationship with them. So we'll be getting more into this in more detail. And in this image on the right hand side, it's called personality in this particular printout. Sometimes it's called the conscious, sometimes it's called the mind and the other is the body, right? So the black numbers, again, that's where you were, where the planets were in the gates when you were born and then the design or the unconscious or the body which is the red numbers is where they were 88 days prior to your birth and it's the two things that come together so when you see the um, the numbers lit up as red or as black that's helping you to understand if it's more in the conscious or more in the unconscious then with this image it's pointing to where the gates are so on the left hand side you can see the numbers there right? Those are the number of the gate. And that number corresponds to the image in the center of the body graph. So if we just look at this one, you'll see that the uh, design sun, which is the very first one, is, is the 63. And the 63 is lit up on the head center. Okay, so on the other side are the, uh, the blue uh, arrows are pointing to where the planets are. So the planets are those symbols that are right next to the numbers. And then here are all the planetary symbols. You can find this anywhere on the internet, but in case you don't have it, this is what the planetary symbols look like. Where the planets are when you were born and 88 days prior, in the gates is what creates the colored in parts of your chart, which is your definition, which you have an ongoing, ready, reliable access to that energy and a consistent way of experiencing it, unless you have rejected or suppressed it. So how you actually experience that energy is variable. We're going to dive into this a little bit more in a minute. So your definition is like a lighthouse. It's like you're transmitting however you're experiencing the energy of your definition. It's like going dee -dee 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 -dee, like you're shining the light out. It's like a radio station um, or TV station, right? We used to send those out. Now they all go through wires, but the radio still do that, right? But also the lighthouse, you're just sending this signal out. However it is that you're experiencing that, that particular part of your chart. Whereas the parts that are open are more like a sponge or more like a satellite dish. They're like taking in the energies from other people and then amplifying them. So you've experienced all of your openness many, many thousands of times during the course of your life. It's just that your openness you experience differently depending on your life experience and who you've been around. Now, it's commonly said that we're subjected to conditioning in our openness. You will hear this a lot. Now, what this means is, is that because it's open, we don't have a consistent way of experiencing it, right? It comes and it goes and it comes and it goes. However, 
if we had heavy conditioning when we were small people uh, in an open part of our chart, then we can develop a more consistent way of experiencing that simply through repetition over and over and over and over. So for example, I have an open emotional solar plexus. I experienced a lot of emotions as a child. I was picking up and amplifying the suppressed emotions of my parents, probably my brother too, but I'm more aware of it with my parents. And so I was running a lot of emotional energy that was not mine through my open emotional solar plexus. And this led me to have a lot of emotional energy. Now, some people respond to that by saying, "Ooh, I don't like emotional energy. I'm going to get away from it. I don't want to deal with it. Other people become really dramatic. Uh, because they've had so much emotional energy in, in, in there. Okay, some people become peacemakers. These are all ways we could say we've been conditioned by the experience of having a lot of emotional energy run through that open center. However, it's also possible to become extremely wise in these areas. I, as a relatively young person, wanted to understand emotional energy because I felt like it would take me over and I would be at the mercy of it and I didn't know what was going on and I didn't like that feeling at all. And so I did a lot of psychological work and understood that. Later on, I started to understand more um, energetic uh, aspects of emotions and then eventually I came to human design and went, oh, okay. And through each of those processes, I was able to decondition my strong emotional energy as I came to understand myself better and what um, had occurred for me in my life and what are the different components that activate emotional energy. So I would say, yes, in some ways I was conditioned in my emotional solar plexus, but it also has been a huge pathway for me to become very wise about emotional energy. So much so that I have a whole pillar in the eight pillars of feminine sovereignty on emotional wisdom. I feel like I've become quite an expert around emotional energy and I do not feel that I'm at the mercy of my conditioning around my emotional energy. Now I'm able to feel pretty emotionally neutral a lot of the time and then I have my own emotions uh, which arise through life experience and then there are times where I go oh wow I'm feeling something and I can tell it's actually not my emotional energy. I become adept right? I become wise because of that. Very often in more traditional human design language, it's like you mm, often are really at the mercy of that, right? You're at the mercy of other people's energy coming at you all the time in your openness. And I want you to know that it's not necessarily that way at all. If you focus on your openness and you want to become wise and you want to become adept in that area, you absolutely can, so much so that it can become a superpower for you. I feel like my emotional wisdom and also my relationship to embodiment and creativity, which is the sensing circuit, which is virtually open in my chart, I've become very wise and very adept in that area as well. So I just want to help you understand that you're not necessarily at the mercy of your openness the way sometimes people talk about it. Uh, but it does take your attention and it does take your awareness and it takes your desire and your practice to become more um, on top of that. Now, um, I want you to know that you are just as conditioned in your definition as you are in your openness. People do not talk about this in human design very much at all. Very Usually people don't talk about your how you've been conditioned in your definition, but the truth is you've been just as conditioned in your definition as you have been in your openness. And the thing is, is that you we get conditioned as a young person and then it kind of sticks, right? Because it is, um, defined, which means it's kind of like there's a landing place for the conditioning and it holds on there, if you will. It'll stay there, right? Until you purposefully change it. You can change the way you experience your definition. Absolutely. 
But again, you have to give it attention. You have to give it your focus. You have to want to do it and you have to practice. And in some ways, it's harder with your definition because it's kind of fixed in there, right? It's consistent. It's been there. And you're, you're like, I've been relating to that part of myself this way forever, <laughs> right? But I do want you to know that you absolutely can change it. You are not at the mercy of your conditioning in anywhere, any part of your chart. Now, my understanding of uh, human design and also of life in general uh, is that we have at least three possible expressions. And I really built this out as the spectrum of expression in my book on feminine sovereignty. In each one of the pillars, there's actually a whole section in the back that talks about the ex uh, spectrum of expression that goes the awakened and empowered, the shadow and the disempowered. Now let me break this down for you for you a little bit. Let's start with the disempowered. We all know what be, being disempowered around something is, right? Is either we're rejecting it because we don't like it. I have met plenty of people who've rejected their emotional energy, even though they're defined there, because we live in an emotionally kind of dysfunctional culture and it's kind of something we do, <laughs> right? Or if people felt like, you know, emotions were taking them over and they were like, ugh, so they suppress it, right? And then you become disempowered around it. So you reject it or you feel like you're at the mercy of it. Like if you were feeling that you were at the mercy of your emotions, which is kind of how I felt when I was younger, right? Um, then uh, then that, that would be an example of that. Then the shadow is when you're using the power of the energy to control or manipulate people or situations in order to feel more safe yourself, in order to gain power to yourself. Now, I know that sounds kind of nefarious and, and icky and like bad people do that. But the truth is, most of us have been conditioned to do this. And we do it in subtle ways. We lie a little bit here, we withhold a little thing here, we, we try to talk somebody into doing something. And women in particular, have been trained to do this from the belief that men are stronger than we are, that they're more aggressive and they're more violent, and that we need to control and manipulate them, ideally without them knowing it, because we are the so-called weaker sex. Okay, that whole way of being a woman, it's an aspect of what I would really think of as shadow femininity, is uh, been around for, for hundreds and hundreds of years, probably even thousands of years, because it's an aspect of patriarchy. So it's good to kind of unpack that for yourself to see, wow, am I trying to gain power by being a little coercive right here, even if it's covert, right? Am I doing that? How can I unravel that a bit? Because the shadow is the power over aspect, whereas the disempowered is feeling like other people or other situations have power and you do not. Now, the awakened and the empowered expression is one where you're fully able to embody the positive and uplifting uh, aspects of that particular part of your chart, that particular energy. But you don't need, ha have the need to assert your power over other people. And you also don't give your power away to other people, right? You're able to build your power within and then hold your power and express your power, right? So if we go back and you think about this being this lighthouse, right? Here you are this lighthouse and you're transmitting and are you transmitting a disempowered aspect of your chart and a shadow aspect of your chart and an empowered aspect of your chart, right? So you're sending out all these done at different qualities of, um, uh, uh, of your definition. It's a really good place to check it out because like I said, we're all conditioned in all the parts of our chart. I mean, how could we not? It, like that's how we actually make our way in the world and how we understand what life is about is by doing that. And as I said in the first video in this series, which you can go and um, check out here, is that we are con conditioned from the earliest age, right? You know, we learn how to walk, we learn how to talk, we learn how to brush our teeth, we learn how to ride a bike, we learn how to drive a car, right? Those are all, that's all conditioning for us also. And so it's not necessarily a negative thing. So let's dig in just with a couple of examples. So the will center is the center for money, for value, 
for worthiness, for willpower, obviously. Um, I like to think of it as the, the part of the heart that's about courage as well. It's like the, the courage and the willpower to be able to mm, do things that are challenging for us or scary for us, right? It's that mm, energy. And uh, m- like I said, most people have it uh, open, but I have run into many people many, 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 many people who uh, are expressing the disempowered aspects of the will center. So questions about value. Do I value myself? Am I worthy? These are huge issues for people, right? And I see this just as much with people who have defined will centers as people have open will centers. So check this out for yourself. If you have a defined will center, what's your relationship to money? to resources, to abundance, um, to worthiness, to your own sense of self-value, right? This is a very, very common thing where people are negatively uh, conditioned around their will center. Some people, sometimes people use this, they use their will to try to coerce other people. Shadow comes up here a lot, right? Um, and so, you know, people are using that energy uh, because they have this kind of will energy and they can project it onto other people and get other people to come into a- alignment with what they want, sometimes without them even realizing how much they are being unconsciously manipulated. Another common place where we can see negative conditioning is in the gate 10. So the gate 10 is on the um, G center and it's the the gate for self-love. And so it's like, mm, most people I know, at least for some period of their life, have been really challenged around self-love and they fall into the blame, right? Because the, the aspects of the, the, um, D810, when you're not in that empowered place of really loving yourself, you usually tend to criticize yourself, or you're blaming yourself, you're beating up on yourself, you're finding out, you know, focusing on what's wrong with you, right? Or you're blaming other people, you're focusing on what's wrong with them, right? Or you're attracting blame from them. Those are all the shadow and the disempowered aspects of the gate 10. Whereas really loving yourself is the awakened and empowered state. Most people don't have that. Most people are really conditioned into either that shadow where they're blaming other people, they're projecting their, um, you know, that other people are the problem or they're doing it to themselves. So these are two places I hope you can like get this pretty easily with those because they're very common and see, oh, you know what? I'm just as, I'm conditioned in my definition as well as my openness. So, what we want to be able to do is to understand how are we expressing the defined parts of our chart. This is where we start, right? Because we want those consistent energies to be in that awakened and empowered state and definitely not in the disempowered and not in the shadow either, because that's a icky way for us to be with each other. That's one of the first things we do. But then we're also going to look at our openness and how can we move from feeling like either we've been negatively conditioned there or we're at the mercy of outside forces so that we can then become wise and we can take command of the power of our openness so that we can become wise. So many of the images that I shared with you here today are in my ebook series. This is the ebook series that I mentioned to you at the beginning. I do have the Getting Started with Human Design, uh, which is a gift, and then this Transform Your Life with Human Design in the Deep Dive Journal. This one requires a small investment. I'll put the link for both of them down below if you want to be able to use these to go a bit deeper with what we're talking about. Um, they're they're really beautiful um, images, and I think that it can help you develop a relationship with your chart that isn't so incredibly um, left-brained, but also helps to open up um, your creativity and your intuition. So our comment question for today is, what have you learned about the definition of your chart that has been really helpful for you in terms of understanding who you are? I can't wait to read your responses. All right, many blessings, much love. Bye for now.